Hello! Um, we are now live on our Mental Health Mondays. I will wait for you guys to join. Hello, Cher Ferrick, welcome. Or Shapiro, hey Rebecca. Um, Usher, thanks for joining. Hey, Nancy Summer, that's my grandmother, guys. Um, Erica, good to see you again. Hey, Afa, Panina, welcome. Okay, let's um, invite our guest of the night. Let's see. Let's see if she's on. Eliza. Oh, we'll wait for her to come. Anyway. Hey, Jay Party. Hey, from Foodie, SD, Sarah. Welcome, everybody. Oh, Brian, my grandfather's also watching. Hey, family. <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, while we wait, anyone have any good ideas for perm costumes? No? Just waving? Hey. Hey. Um, Jenny, welcome. Dine. What is that? Dine with L. Oh, here. Aliza Trapper has joined. Let's invite her and welcome her. we talked about before sure. and then you just jump right in. So, um, Elise is going to talk to us about happiness and emotional regulation. Um, she kind of, uh, started a little bit and then, um, kind of the, um, talking us through a little bit how to gain control of your own emotions in the moment. And then she wants, she's going to put a lot of focus on, um, managing how to manage our long-term happiness through, um, our thinking, our actions, our values. So she's going to jump right into it and, she has a lot of fun stuff prepared for us. So let's just get started. Okay, thanks. So basically, I'm gonna start with a little bit, just some facts about depression, how common it is today. There's 16.2 million adults in the United States that have experienced a major depressive episode in the past year. It's estimated that 15% of the adult population will experience depression at some point in their lifetime. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. It's the second leading co cause of death among ages 15 to 24, and 44,000 Americans die of suicide each year. Now, I know that's maybe a little bit dark, but we're going to be talking a little bit about that tonight, just to get, get you know, a background on that. Um, now, I want to, before even just going into, like, talking about general happiness and unhappiness, I want to really just define, like, what is clinical, what is clinical depression, okay? So um, the DSM defines it as, at least two weeks of a depressed mood or loss of interest or pleasure in almost all activities, as well as at least five symptoms of. So of sleep issues, either you're sleeping too much or too little, changes in appetite and weight, you can be eating too little or eating too much, a decrease or, um, de decreased level you know, of energy and fatigue almost every day, difficulty concentrating at decisions, um, sometimes recurrent thoughts of suicide um, or suicide attempts. Now, you don't have to have all these criteria to meet it. You need at least to have five um, to meet diagnosis for major depressive disorder. Um, but really, you know, it has to be impacting a person's life um, significantly, impairing them socially, functioning, their daily functioning. Um, now, there's also a lighter form of that called dysthymia, which is basically less severe and longer lasting. So it's less, it impacts them less severe on a daily basis. They're able to, you know, function more throughout the day, but it is there and it's, um, it lasts longer. So it could be for two, three years. So that is basically just speaking about, you know, clinic, clinical depression. Um, now, I just, I know, you know, medication questions are going to come up and I just want to like say something. Medication with depression does definitely help. Um, they say that 60 to 70% will respond to medication, but also 30 to 50% have responded to placebo uh, medication, to sugar pull. So it really shows that like, yes, medication is effective, it will, but it does not necessarily recover. Um, it will help you respond to the problem, but it doesn't, you can't, it's like a Band-Aid. Um, it helps, of course it can help, 
but it's not, it's not everything. And therefore I think it's very, that's what we were talking tonight a lot about just like emotional regulation and helping us manage our mood better. Um, life skills really just to, okay. So now, um, I'm going to be, you know, often people say like, it has a lot to do. Depression has a lot to do with, um, there's really no single cause for depression. Okay. It's a lot. There's a lot of things that can cause it. So yes, it can maybe be, be some brain chemistry. It can be hormones. It could be genetics. Um, it can be, you know, life experiences. It can be physical health problems. A lot of things will cause, there's not one factor that will cause it. Um, but at the same time, like I lost my train of thought. Um, basically even let's say, Oh, I know. Okay. Even brain chemistry. Right. So people say like, Oh, but it's like in my genetics or, or it's my imbalance in brain. But the question is, is how do you know what is, what is causing that imbalance in brain? Is it, is it stress and physical illness? So that's what I really like to focus on how we can help manage our mood by changing our thoughts, learning, regulating our emotions and doing, doing things differently. Um, and focusing on that. I'm not saying this is going to be the all end to like life's, you know, this is going to cure depression. I'm not really, I'm just here to like, give us some insights tonight about how, how it can help us, um, have a better, more control of our mood and emotions. Um, so now let's go on to talk a little bit about, um, what is emotional regulation and how that, how, how that's linked to happiness. So let me give you a little example of what emotional regulation is and what happened tonight. Basically, tonight I had a very busy night. I came home from work and um, I had to see a client. And then I had to obviously do dinner, bath, all that, see a client, and then come here. Now, I had a plan that my husband was going to, was supposed to be here tonight. And then he t we had some sort of misunderstanding and I had to get a babysitter. I had an hour on the babysitter. Um, out of all nights where I have like my night jam packed, you know? So, oh, and I had to pick up my daughter from, 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 Jumet, from dance tonight. There was a lot of things happening more than any other night. And I noticed, I observed myself. I noticed myself thinking, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? What if I don't find a babysitter? And then I mindfully really just watched. I was able to really just watch what was happening, my thoughts, like what was going through my mind. And what I tell myself, okay, let me just, what do I have to do? I have to problem solve. Okay, what am I going to do? So I, I looked for a babysitter, and then I basically, and then now I'm here tonight. So that was emotional regulation. Yes, there was lots of feelings that were going on. I was anxious. I was scared. I was worried. I was stressed. But then I problem solved, and I, so that is emotional regulation. It's the ability to control or influence which emotions you want to have, when you want to have them, and how you experience and express them. So it's, that is what, it's having control of your emotions, when you're going to want to have when you're when you going to have a certain emotion and when it's effective to have it or not. So for example, um, let's say you are at a funeral. So it is appropriate then to cry. Of course you should feel sad at a funeral. But then after, if you have to go to work, it's not going to be effective to be crying then. So that's another example of emotional regulation. Um, now, Let's go on. So that is what emotional regulation is. Let's go. Let's go on to what is um, what what's a way? What are emotions do for us? This will, when we have a good understanding of what emotions do for us, this is how we'll have more control over our emotions. So let's think about this for a moment. What's the purpose of our emotions? It really it tells us something. It communicates something to ourselves. It communicates something to others, and it it motivates us for action. So what do I mean? Um, for example. Let's think about guilt. What does guilt provide with us? Guilt tells us that we did something against our morals. So what, what does that motivate us to do? To change, our, to not do it next time, right? Or envy. What's the purpose of envy? When we, when we see, when we're envy of others, it makes us want something that we don't have. And what does that actually activate us to do? To work really hard to get what we want to do, right? So maybe competition a little bit. We're envious of someone's like successful, so then it makes us work harder. So emotions serve a purpose. And if we're able to just sit with it, identify it, and think about what am I feeling and why am I feeling, emotions really tell us something. It's, it's, it's like detective work. It's so important. So this, just by naming and understanding what the mo emotion is serving, is a great way in terms of regulating our, emotion, regulating our emotions. Um, 
Now, you know, it's important. We need emotions for survival. We know that, right? Like, if a car's coming, we're going to run away. If there's a beer, we're going to run away. So it's, we really need it. And often we, we suppress it because we're scared of it sometimes, but really we need to, we need to be in touch with that. Um, so that's the first way of getting more control of your emotions. Um, the second way really is we often don't think about, I mean, at least think, you know, we often don't think about this, but it's really how do, when we're, we want to decrease having a vulnerable mind of, ne of unpleasant emotions. And how do we do that is really by taking care of our physical health. Um, are we getting enough sleep? Are we sleeping seven to nine hours a day? Are we, um, are we exercising 20, 20 minutes a day? Are we having balanced meals? Are we skipping meals? Are we drinking enough water? So being controlled, taking control of our physical health is really a big way of, of, of making, being able, you know, keeping us in a good mood. And that really helps us gain more control of our emotions too. So that's just another, um, I guess, short-term way of just like being able to take control of our mood more. Um, and I wanna just like, just because we're talking about emotions, I just wanna say something. I don't like to say emotions are positive or negative. I like to say that they're pleasant and unpleasant. Why? Because pleasant, think about it, is surprise. Let's say the emotion surprise. Is that good or bad? Not necessarily. If some people might think it's good. Oh, it's a surprise birthday party. So for them, it's good. They were surprised. For your 90 year old grandmother, for her birthday party, that might not be a positive, that might not be a pleasant emotion for her because she might have a heart attack if you throw a surprise party. party. So we really want to think of emotions in terms of pleasant and unpleasant and stay away from good and bad because it really depends on what's happening for that moment. It might be good for you for, for that for a different time. It might not be just something to think about. Now let's go on to um, another way to have more control of our emotions is, um, is actually changing our emotional responses to situations. So what do I mean? Really checking the facts. Often we have so many assumptions that we think that will make us think differently. So for example, let's say someone loses a crazy business deal. They lose a business deal and so of course they're gonna feel sad. But what leads people to let's say be ineffective and lead to let's say depression and staying in that, neg that, that mood is really um, thinking that I'm a loser, it's all my fault, and then not going to actually problem solve like okay, of course, it's, of course it's sad, I, I lost that big business deal. What do I have to do now? I have to problem solve. So I figure out how, what am I gonna do next? I need money, to, I need food to put on my table. So really we wanna think about, we wanna like ask ourselves, what are the facts? And, um, and you know, changing your belief and assumptions can help you change your emotional reaction to your situation. So I'll give you another example. Um, you find out that someone made plans without you, right? So deciding that the, the person doesn't, so the fact, there is the facts. The facts are, is that these people didn't invite you. But if you have assumptions and beliefs that these people didn't like you, that is where you'll end up feeling really rejected and hurt. So often we have many, many assumptions that we, that we think, and that will actually um, make us feel a lot more hurt and sad than we need to. So let's just check in with, check in with the facts. Um, so... Let's see what else here. A lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm taking notes. No. If you can't hear me like bumping away on my computer. Oh, all the time. You know, it's like when you're asked to like speak about something that you do all the time, it's like, oh, <laughs> how wait, do you break I, it down? How do, I, how do I do this? So yeah, I'm just trying to have a lot of thoughts on this and I'm very passionate about it, but one thing at a time, we'll get through this. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so now, let's just, there's something. Oh, I like this example. Let's say with loss. What going back to like just thinking about our thoughts and how that really does impact the way we view situations. If someone dies, of course we're going to feel sad, and it's normal to have grief. But then thinking it's my, but then thinking I'll never find someone again. That is where often leads us, leads people to depression. It's that distorted thinking. It's not just distorted thinking, but that's a very very big component in where we will lead us to feel much more depressed than we need to, than we need to be. Um, so it's, the mind is a powerful thing. It really, really is. And so, okay. So now let me go back to, um, so we spoke about checking the facts. Um, 
Now let's go on to another way that can really help us, um, again, have more control of our emotions. Is something called opposite action, okay? So we often have emo emotional urges. We're scared, we might want to run away, we might want to avoid. We're sad, we might want to just stay in bed and be depressed. But it's not effective and it will make things worse. So when, when, the fe when it's not effective to be in an emotion, that's when we want to do opposite action. Or when we know the facts and knowing the facts is not enough. So for example, um, I know that I, let's say I shouldn't be scared tonight when I'm doing this live. I do this all the time, but for some reason I was feeling nervous before, right? So just knowing the facts didn't help me. What I have to do, I have to do opposite action. I have to go right into it and I have to do this live. That's the only way I'm gonna get over this fear. So, off, so with opposite action, we wanna do that when it's not effective to be in that emotion. So often clients who let's say, when people are depressed, they want to stay in bed. So what do I tell them? It's like, and it feels really hard to get out of bed. It does. They're depressed. But the thing is, when you stay in bed, it makes it a lot worse. So what do they have to do, even though they don't feel like doing it, is get, is get up and, and be active. So, and actually, when you're more active, that actually increases more motivation. So, off, so that's something we're going to want to think about is like opposite action. People often think, but like, I feel this way. I have to act on it. No, you don't. It might not be effective. Yes, sometimes it is effective to act on your emotion if you're sad and by a funeral. But if you're so scared that you're not going to go out of your house, that's not effective. So you're going to want to do opposite action and not stay in your fear. Um, okay. So I want to ask everyone a question here. We want to all we all want to achieve happiness, right? It feels good, and. I want to ask you a question. Are you facing your fears? Are you living beyond your comfort zone? Because this will bring you more happiness. It really will. So when people want to be, just something to think about a little bit. Are we living with our eyes wide open? Or are we so busy every single day with just getting through the day that we're often not thinking about the bigger picture? Um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Just the thought for, for a moment. Now I'm going to get on to talk about, um, which is actually the main part of tonight, which I feel... I want to be able to leave you with something and just like telling you change your thoughts. Mm, it's not going to really help in a, you know, 45 minute live. Um, so I'm going to try to step. We're getting to now the meat. So I want to talk about accumulating another way to really gain control of your emotions and really just create happiness is accumulating positive experiences, short term and long term. So long term part is what I'm going to be focusing on for the rest of it. Let's just for a moment now just talk about the short term. Think about it. Every. We want to create more positive emotions. So if we're not doing anything enjoyable throughout the day, I mean, you're not going to feel good. So ask yourself, what am I doing throughout the day that I'm creating positive, pleasant emotions? So am I, I know me, I go to Starbucks every day. So by lunch, you know, I make myself a good lunch, whatever it is. What are you doing throughout the day? For every person, it's going to be different. But you want to think about short term, what am I doing for myself? At the end of the day, do I take a nice bath? Do I watch a show that I like? Um, do I listen to music when I'm in the car? You know, just small things that you do every day for yourself. Now, long-term, you're right. It's not going to help you with long-term happiness, but every single day, every moment, if you're feeling having more pleasurable things, you're going to feel a lot better. So start adding that into your day if you're just in this, like, mode of, like, I need to get through my life. I need to just do this and this and this. And stop a little bit and just, you know, put some positive things in your life. Um, now... Before I go on to the long-term, speaking about long-term happiness, I wanted to share something with you, which has, made, which has opened my mind so much. I often have, been, I work a lot with suicidal clients who are extremely, extremely depressed, borderline personality disorder and, and different things. And when they call me on the phone, needing a reason to live, okay? It really has made me think about like, it's opened my eyes, like they don't wanna just, Family's not enough. They want meaning. And this has really opened my eyes. Like, what, what is my meaning in life? What is the purpose? What? And this has made me really think about, like, they want to build a life worth living for. That's their goal. A DBT, that's the goal. Building a life worth living for. And this has made me think, like, what are my values? I'm, work, I'm sitting there with clients and see, thinking about what are your values? What do you want out of life? This has definitely, for me, changed my life. And I'm going to try to give that to you a little bit over tonight because... This has changed my life so much. Um, now, so what do we want? We need to build long-term happiness. And 
why? Why is that? I mean, who is going to last? And I think a big part of it is also it builds resiliency. So, because when something does go wrong, if you don't, if you have nothing to fall back on or look on, you're going to fall apart. So how do we build long-term um, positive emotions is really every day doing things towards your goals and your values. Okay. So, um, first of all, um, what does a value mean? Let's just define a value for a moment. What are, what are, what are the things that are important to you? So values, what does it mean? It's the things that are important to you. What do you cherish about life? They're the highest priorities in our life. They are not goals and outcomes. Maybe we have goals to get to want to try to be more, live more by our values, but we're always working on them. They're not in our future. Um, they are ways of living. And it's about engaging in activities that you value. So it's the things that are the most important to us. And we all have different values and we can have many values and values could change. Um, so I know we posted on the story, some value, some values, but let's go into that a little bit. Um, so the people have values, many different values. Some people have values. Relationships are so important to them. And that's the most important thing. Now you could have many values, but you want to be thinking about this because we want to be living with our eyes wide open and really think about like, that's the only way you're going to gain happiness is if you're living by your values. So if a person has a value to that relationships are important, we want to think about like, what, how am I working towards that value of mine? Am I engaging every day or not every day, but am I living by my values or am I screaming at everyone? And that's going to make you feel a lot hard, feel horrible. Or like, Oh yeah, relationships are important to me, but like I haven't spoken to anyone in the last month. So you want to think about what are my values and how am I living my life by them? So I'll give you some examples. Just, attending relationships, being part of a group. Some people have this very big thing to be part of a group, whatever that means for them. Um, it can mean family. It can mean being involved in the community. Some people have the value of being powerful and able to influence others. And how might they get that? For some people, it's being a leader, making a great deal of money, um, being, co um, being popular and accepted. It, listen, it's who you are. So I, I'm not here to say what values are good or good. It's really... At the end of the day, it's being honest with yourself. What is important to you? So if it's important for you to be powerful, how are you using that in a good way? How are you influencing others in a good way? And I think that power can be used in, 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 in such a good way. So um, another thing, achieving things in life. There are those people who are very into being productive. So again, thinking about how am I working towards that? Am I working towards goal? Or am I being passive and letting life fly right by me? Um, some people, spirituality for some people is a very big value. And spirituality doesn't mean just religion. It means living, living for something more than yourself. Um, working at self-development for some people is a value. Um, recognizing the universal good of all, of all things. So what does that mean? Being fair to treat people equally and provide equal opportunities. Understanding different people. Being open-minded. Caring for... So, you know, often people are like, oh, yeah, it is like a value of mine to, like, care about others or treat people, you know be open-minded. But then when I'm with, with this group of people, I'm very judgmental. So like, I'm not looking by my values. And then that often can make you feel pretty, just doesn't feel, feel good. Um, having integrity, being honest, um, you know, standing up for your personal beliefs, being courageous and facing a living life, be, being a person who pays debt to others and repairs damage I've caused. So that's all under having integ integrity. So that's a value of So you want to think about like, what am I doing throughout my life that, that are where that, that I am living by these values? Because, you know, often psychopathology does happen is when we're not living by values. Depression, if someone has a value to be so, if everything to them is, you know, to be productive, that's their, that's their value. And maybe they have a, an assumption that that's the only way they're worthy. Cognitive distortion. Now, I'm only worthy if I'm productive. So, if they're not be, if they're sick and they're not able to be productive, that's where psychopathology happens. That's where people end up being depressed. So we want to think about our values, but at the same time, making also checking in that like, um, do I have thinking mistakes and am I having certain assumptions and beliefs that are not necessarily are true, but just something that, you know, is something that I think in my mind. Um, so the first question we want to really ask ourselves: What are my values, right? And um, 
what really matters, thinking about like what in life is your highest priorities is a good way to really check in with yourself. Like, oh, like the things that really talk to us, the things that are important to us, the things that we're willing to give up and sacrifice our time, our family for. Um, one thing, what, as for what really matters to you? What is the direction you want your life to go, to go into? What is in your life now that you do not want to lose? These are questions that will help you think about what your values are. What are things of value that are, are, that are not in your life right now? So I'm not, we're not here to judge ourselves and be judgmental of ourselves tonight. Like, oh my, like, I'm not thinking about this or, or like, I don't have values or I never, it's a, no. The point of this is to really open your eyes and think about what do I want in my life? What is important to me? Um, now it's just off, sometimes values are not our own values. So you want to like check in with that, like, and see, is it a value that my community has put on me? My family has put on me, you know, I have a value for education is important, but wait, really, if no one really knew that I was, that I didn't have education, would I really care? So you want to check in with that. Um, so we want to, and first really just identify values and working towards those goals, working towards them one thing at a time. So not take, not taking in everything all at once, but okay, you know what I do, relations are important to me. So you know what, today I'm going to reach out to that old friend. Um, now... And then when you actually start living towards your values, you actually start to feel really good about yourself. And that motivates us to want to do more and create more good and do more good. It motivates us for more action. Um, now, I'm going to also talk a little bit about building mastery. So another way to really create long-term happiness, besides this for living you know, according to your values, is doing things that make us feel more confident, confident and in control. So what do I mean? So if, Everyone is building mastery in different things. For some people, for young children, building mastery for them is tying their shoes. For a three-year-old, tying, learning how to tie their shoes is building mastery. For me, it is not. And I'm not, what, building mastery for every person is really different. For some people, it could be going to the gym. Um, for me, maybe it's, you know, speaking here tonight. So we want to do, and we want to build towards it. One thing, one thing at a time. So being realistic. So if we build, we want to say, I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah, every single night this week. That's taking on too much. It's doing a little bit more than you're doing now, but not too much where you're going to set yourself up for failure. So, for example, if you have a goal to go start with 20 minutes, I'm going to go, you know, start with 20, twice a week this week for 20 minutes. That's building mastery. Um, because, you know, it requires, over time, it generates a sense of self-accomplishment and a series of accomplishments leads to more positive self-concept, more positive self-esteem, and overall greater level of happiness. So you want to know how to create happiness? It's, yeah, it's hard work. It is. It is really hard because the more happiness you, you want, you're going to want, the more work you're going to have to put into it. But it's also very attainable. It's, it's just thinking a little reflection. What do I want to do? Okay, how am I gonna, and how am I going to get there? Breaking it up into small steps. Um, Public speaking, right? So starting with, I'm going to go, I'm going to speak up today at work. Um, when we're having a group meeting, I'm going to share something. And then it might be, I'm going to um, go in a live. And then it might be that I'm going to go speak to 200 people in a room, right? So that is building mastery. And we want to feel good about ourselves. So we want to think about, like, where do we want to build mastery? That's where we're going to feel good. Um, now... So really, like, just think about, we'll start with one thing today. I, if, I, if you can leave here with just thinking about one thing, think about a value that you have and how you're going to get work towards that value. Or think about what am I going to build mastery on? What, what is some, what are, what's important to me? Where do I want to go? The more you're able to go above your comfort zone, and the, that is where you will create happiness. It's really just, just doing that. Um, it's their choice. Or you could just stay with things status quo. You're not going to be as happy. There's nothing like putting that in, putting the efforts in and then seeing it. And it doesn't mean there's not going to be failure. It doesn't mean things are not going to work out. But it's, it's, but it's about not getting stuck in the failure and reflecting and thinking, okay, what went wrong here? What can I do better now? Um, so that is part of, okay, so I guess we can leave some questions. I'm noticing the thought now that I probably left out a lot of important information. I'm noticing it and <laughs> it's okay. So that is 
I think we got a lot of valuable information. So well, you can be confident. You can be confident okay. that you got us some good valuable information. That there's a lot that I want to speak about, and and that's part of it. It's not getting stuck in our thoughts. Okay, so I left out some important things, and maybe I'll have some criticism after, and that's okay. And that is all part of, but not necessarily then acting on what you believe in. And these are all assumptions, so we'll never really know if it's true or not. Okay. Um, so anyone have any questions? What time is it, by the way? I like totally. What time is it's, it? It's nine fifty your time, so we, ha okay. we have about ten minutes for questions. Um, I did see an earlier question. Um, here is happiness the ultimate achievement, or would contentment be a more realistic goal? Is happiness always everyone's goal, or are there other? I don't know. That's a very good question. Um, I think it's something that we're constantly doing. There's really no end. You know, it's like we're constantly working on this. Like we have setbacks and then we have a hard day. So it's not, it's not necessarily like an achievement. It's just, a, it's just if you want to be living a life that you feel more fulfilled and more happy, then it's gaining more control of your emotions and also thinking about how I'm building towards the life I want to live, what, what's important to you. So it's, yeah, I don't know if that, yeah, that's what I, I would say. Um, and yeah, you're right. Part of it, I think they both are true, very dialectical, that contentment, Yes, maybe it is accepting right now to be okay with where you're at because you're very busy right now and you can't do all the things you want. So that, that might be for that moment saying, yes, this, I'm doing enough right now. And still, when you can, working towards things that you would, would like to do. So I think that it's, they're, both, they're both true. Okay. Um, thanks. Uh, let's see. I, didn't, I don't know if I saw other questions in there. I actually thought of something. Um, let me just scroll sure. up really fast to make sure I didn't miss anyone. If you did ask a question earlier and we missed it, just rewrite it here. Um, but, uh, something I was thinking about while you were talking about, um, oh, here. Okay. Um, I'll just finish this thought and then we'll, um, answer this question here. So, um, while you were talking about values and making sure that every day yeah. we're working towards our values, um, any, not every uh, day. I mean, like, oh, okay. That was actually my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it supposed to be something every day or is it kind of like an overall mindset? And do you have any practical tips to kind of keep it at the forefront of our heads? Like where our values are and, and, you know, like tips to keep it always there. Is that, does that, question yeah. Make yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a very good question. Um, so I, I don't like the word I should, I think I use that word. We should always be working them. Always is never a good thing to really use. Um, but I think it's really like, it's definitely having a certain mindset, living with your eyes open, like really being mindful of like, instead of just getting through the day and just trying to check, just, you know, you know how life is exhausting. I don't know about you. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I think I am three <laughs> times. <laughs> so it's definitely, you know, it's, it's something that you want to like, I guess, think of back of your mind, but then also when things come up, like, you want to um, yell at that person, but you're like, wait, I don't want to be that type of person that, that where I yell at people. So then mm -hmm. it's like, if you hold yourself back, that is living towards your values. And if you're able to live more towards your values, you will be a happier person over, overall. Mm -hmm. So I think more of a mindset, but then it's also things that you do mm -hmm. like throughout your day and your life. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's holding that truth that is there. And then also like, trying to live more by it so that you feel happier. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not exact, but you're right. There are not goals and outcomes. You're not, you can never be perfect in a value. It's never, Oh, I'm done now with re having good relationships. Well, this is like an ongoing thing, trying to work in a relationship. And, and obviously of course you're going to have setbacks and they're not going to always be the way you want. But if it's a value and it's bothering you, you're feeling guilty about it. What does guilt tell us that I'm not living by my value? So then, okay, let's try next time to be a little more mindful. Um, I'll, I'll call that person I haven't spoken to in a long time. I'll reach out to go out with my friends. Um, so I think that, yeah, you can think, oh I, oh, I haven't seen my friends in a long time. Let's go out. Let's go out. To, you know, let's go out. Let me see them because I do value relationships. So I don't know if that was helpful. Um, yeah. Yeah, kind of like a, yeah, like if it's a mindset. It's the like getting used to mentally checking in the moment. Yeah, um, that's what I got out of it. Um, the uh, someone else had a question. Okay, can you explain how DBT works with this? Yeah, um, with which thing? With depression? With emotional regulation? <laughs> what? Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Girl. 
you're already the at. <laughs> okay. Well, basically, I mean, DBT is really, it helps with, a lot of it has to do with regulating, with, dep with depression, with, I mean, there's really five, like, parts to it, five modules, interpersonal effectiveness, which is with dealing with relationships. There's a whole part in emotional regulation, which I spoke about some, some things tonight were DBT strategies of, of um, emotional regulation. So that's how DBT would help. It teaches skills about how to control your emotions or so checking the facts is DBT, also CBT. Um, opposite action is a, is a DBT um, skill. You know, it's often something we do, but we don't think about. So we teach people to think about them. This is, you know, so it's that. Um, it's also. Oh, here. Uh, they answered. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, in relation to working toward being happy and emotional regulation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So exactly what I'm saying. So, so DBT um, helps with, yeah, it helps with emotional regulation. How, what was the question? How? Because it's one of the, a big component DBT focuses a lot on emotional regulation. There's one whole module on it, which is basically a lot of different skills of how we can control our emotions more. Um, so that helps with happiness. The more control that you're able to have your emotions, the more aware you are, um, you'll gain more control. So DBT focuses on that. It focuses on mindfulness. I mean, I don't know if that, and that mindfulness really, really helps. Being able to like just observe what you're thinking in the moment, what you're feeling, because um, then you'll have more control of what you do. So, in, so yeah, so that's what DBT helps. Um, yeah, okay. And then, uh, oh, yeah, I'll also ask how we can instill these concepts in your kids. It's interesting. Oh, that's a good question. Um, so how do we instill it in our kids? I think, first of all, a lot of it is like modeling to them good values, right? So part of having values is really wanting them and even thinking about it. So. So modeling for our kids good values, modeling emotional regulation for our kids. When we freak out, that they're going to learn. You know, oh, I freak out when something spills on the floor. So, of course, it's hard. We're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. Uh, but just trying to be mindful and aware that, like, our kids are watching us. So by being an example is important. By also validating their feelings helps with emotional regulation. So if you want them to be more regulated and more happiness, validating their feelings. I see you're so upset. Um, and setting limits. Like I see you're really upset, like frustrated about that and we can't hit. Let's try to, you know, do something else to calm down. So it's definitely just being there, listening, being present are all ways to really help them with just with emotional regulation. Okay, thanks. Um, and Rebecca asked a great question also. Uh, how do you know when it's time to reevaluate your values? Hmm. Um, so I'd ask yourself that question. I mean, if you feel that you want to do everything in balance, which is actually a big part of DBT is like walking this middle path. So if you have a value to be productive and you're being productive where it's, where it's affecting your family, you're always working, right? So that, so you want to ask your, if something's going wrong, if you have a spouse that's telling you, you're always working, like be with <laughs> us, be here. So that is something where you'd be like, okay, yes, this is a value of mine, but I need to have a balance of it. I need, I also have a value that my family is important to me. So both of these are values. So what's more important? Oh, my family is more, is more important. That value is, is more important than my values to be productive. So I'm going to focus on that. And, but they both could be, you both could have values for both. You know, it's, we have many values, um, but it's a balance. And then really thinking about in that moment, a, one, one value might have to take priority over another value. You know, people have a value to have a good time and experience life and enjoy, enjoy life. That's a value. It's a, but you know, if they have a newborn baby and they're home all day, nursing, feeding up at night, that other value is going to have to be put aside for a little bit. Um, so yes, they do change. And I guess your mem your family members will let you know, <laughs> um, or other people might let you know when your values are taken to the degree. So take feedback seriously. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then, okay, yeah. And then Rebecca also asked about uh, the difference between CBT and DBT and how would someone choose which one to go for? So DBT is, is a lot of parts of it are, are based on CBT. Um, the added component, what happened was is Marshall Linehan who created DBT. I'm getting all these messages there that are coming in. I'm going to shut this off. 
um, she basically saw that it was not enough to, it wasn't enough just to change thoughts. She realized that people who were depressed needed more than that. And she added this whole component of learning, of learning skills, learning emotional regulation skills, learning into personal effectiveness skills, um, which is relationships, learning mindfulness skills, learning radical acceptance skills, which is like, life, you know, life might be horrible and it might suck, but what are you going to do about it? Like, and you, you have no choice. Like you have to sometimes just, so she, you know, there's mu mu a lot more added components to it, but there's definitely a lot of CBT stuff in it. Um, CBT concepts. So that's, it's, it's, she, that's what she added. And she also added this belief of validation and pushing for change because with CBT, it wasn't enough. She found with very depressed patients, it wasn't enough just to have them change, but there was a piece that was needed of validation. Yes, this is so hard and you can do better. I'm doing the best you can and you can do better. Um, so that's the added, that's, that's the added component piece. So dialectical means the word actually means that there's more than one truth to a situation. So there's a lot of dialectics in dial dialectical behavioral therapy. You're doing the best you can and you can do better. Um, you, can love, you can love someone and be angry at someone. Often people who are depressed have very black and white thinking. Um, so dialectical behavioral therapy helps them think of a new truth, how all these truths can be, can be true. Um, so that was added, that was added on. Um, but they're both very effective and some people, some people need, some people benefit, you know, for, more from DBT at times. Yeah, so I don't okay. know if that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds clear to me. Um, okay, well, I think we covered all the questions and with great timing. Um, that was very informative. Thank you so much for all these tips and the whole, the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I took notes. It was really great. It was really helpful. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you, Shoshana, for giving me the opportunity. Um, okay, so. Okay, I yeah, guess what was that? No, no, I guess we're done, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Do you want to do you want to end with anything? Do you um, wrap I think up? that what I will do is, if you want to have ideas of values and priority list, I can post it, like, maybe a closer picture um, to just, like, get some ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and just, like, I end off like yes we're working towards these things we're thinking about it and perhaps maybe just having more of an open mind um mm -hmm. i guess I think if there's anything else i mean yeah rebecca uh said maybe book recommendations oh, if anybody yeah sure no, thank you. oh sorry i love this book this is very feeling good yeah okay all right i'll write that down this is a really good book this is very cbt um, okay if you want something more in DBT, um, you can message me and we'll answer, you know, more questions, more book recommendations. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you have, like, if anybody was, I guess, like inspired by the values talk and you have other book recommendations, you can pass forward. We can just make a list to pass out to people. Um, or if other people have ideas of things that they've read on the topic and just have inspired them, we always like to do some kind of follow-up. Sounds great. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on tonight. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, and it'll be on for another 24 hours. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. and we'll, we'll put it on YouTube after too. So, okay, fine. We don't really need to watch the next 24 hours. <laughs> okay. All right. Do I do anything like saving it or anything or no? What's that? Do I save it or no? Or like, you do oh, you don't that? need to. And actually, um, it never works for me too either. So Rebecca does the tedious fork of rewatching it. Okay, and fine. It tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but it'll, this, it'll save itself. All right. Thank you. Okay, fine. Okay, good night. Bye, everyone. everyone. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Sleep well. <laughs>